Here's another fact, similar to, uh, to this rule here that we proved that the natural log of kx equals 1 over x. I want to uh, give you the following. The, the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is also 1 over x. And this is important because in, in reality, especially when, when you do it in Calc 2, when you're going to integrate, um, the, you, you work the, the reverse process, or you do the inverse operation. And the inverse operation of the, uh, of the differentiation is integration. So you have 1 over x. You want to know what the function generate that. Uh, you have to put x in absolute value. The reason is the natural log function or the log logarithmic function, the domain of it, the domain of the logarithmic function is only positive values of x. Okay. So if we want to take care of possible negative x, we need to put it in absolute value. But we need to prove this fact, and here's the quick proof of how. Uh, why this is true. Remember, what is the nature of the absolute value? The absolute value of x is x if x is positive or equal to 0, but it's negative x when x is negative. So the negative, negative of negative make it positive. The same here. If f of x equals the uh, natural log of the absolute value of x, we need to define it in, in three different pieces, so to speak. Okay, the first one, uh, is simply natural log of x when x is positive, okay? But what happened when x equals 0? Well, it turned out that there is a hole here because the natural log of 0 does not exist, okay? Uh, what happened when x is negative? Then if x is negative, then we need to take the natural log of negative x. And that's the meaning of the absolute value. Or, or the, the natural log of the absolute value. So this compact uh, statement right there is really three pieces when you look at the domain of the function. So now we look at uh, what happened when x is positive, what happened when x is negative. We need to show that the derivative is 1 over x for these two pieces. Uh, of course, it does, the function does not exist when x equals 0, so we cannot speak of the derivative at this point. So when x is positive, what's going to happen? Well, we take f prime, which is simply the derivative of the natural log of x, as it says here. And <coughs> this, we know it to be 1 over x. So we are good here. On the other hand, when x is negative, then we take the derivative of the natural log of negative x as the function is defined as the natural log of negative x for negative values of x. So we need to apply the chain, the chain rule again. We're going to say that u equals negative x, and therefore the u dx is negative 1. So we end up having in 1 over u, which is 1 over negative x, times dy, du dy, du, I'm sorry, du dx, which is negative 1. So we are back to having 1 over x, okay? So we, this completed the proof, okay? The uh, uh, note here, we substituted, we let u equals negative x, and therefore du dx was negative 1, and y was natural log of u, and therefore dy dx was 1 over u times negative 1, or 1 over negative x times negative 1. So this is what happened in, in, in accomplishing these results, in obtaining these results. So we prove that little fact that uh, the derivative of the absolute value of x is also 1 over x.